two tunes there, because I were just getting me uh, chicken. John, do you like the look of the chicken? Well, I'm impressed. I think it's nice. I think you're missing some rice and pea. But it's obviously cultural in your DNA. I'll be able to cook and it looks pretty quick taste. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cooking is, is a passion of mine. Chef Simmons, I don't know if you've seen it on Instagram. Do you do your social media, Chef Simmons? <laughs> you know that Jonesy doesn't do social media. He's on Twitter now. No, 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 he's not. He's not on Twitter. He, what, with, with the rugby aim Twitter? Yeah, though. but he's getting there. Third party is trying to blag me into it. And if anything, I'm going backwards. But I would actually plug I like to learn a lot, me, and I would actually plug into that if. I could learn a few recipes off you. I think it's an art. It's actually quite I'm good gonna, for Instagram for picking up stuff like that. I'm going to give some. I'm going to give you a big, um, big plug now. A guy in America called. It's called Fitman Cook at Fitman Cook. I think it is. I'll um, find out what it is. And he, he's wicked. Instagram videos like what 10, 20 seconds recipes. They're amazing. Really. And it's all really good food. Really yeah. healthy. My uh, Emma's massive into that. That was that program where you can eat as much as you can. What's he called? That guy. Uh, man versus food. Man versus food. food. He's a Leeds fan. Just, Leeds just sent him a shirt. His, his granddad's from Leeds. Must watch a bit of rugby. True that. Another true story it's from Brother Jones tonight. <laughs> yeah. He lives in New York. He's got a Leeds shirt, right? And uh, man versus food. And he loves it. He can't, he's lost all his weight now. He's not allowed to eat anymore. Honestly? Yeah, he can't. He's he got can't really sick, can Yeah, he's, he's gonna, we're going to kill him. So I said, that's it. Uh, that's the second true story tonight. What was your first true story? Uh, I think it was about... Jones, I can't remember. Marcus Bay. Pardon? No, Marcus Bay. Marcus Bay. Yeah, it was. Oh, Marcus Bay when he first came over <laughs> from uh, Melbourne. We went from Melbourne and played for Hull Dockers, I believe. Because Hull Dockers have got Halifax um, in the Challenge Cup. At Hull Dockers, we're going to go for the Challenge Cup draw a little bit later on, but there's quite a few tasty, spicy uh, fixtures there to, for us to get our teeth into. Right, I'm going to hand you over to Tudor <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm going to hand you over to Tudor to announce tonight's star guest on Rugby in the white corner, weighing in at 78 kilos, the bad boy from Blackstown, Jared Jam Sandwich Summit! <laughs> Jazz, how are you? I'm good, mate, how are you? Yeah, not bad, you can grab the mic, it's alright. Keeps not a mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what to legend yet. That's a no-no in legend terms. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm good, mate. Right, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Wakefield versus Bradford. You lost. What happened? I thought you'd. I thought you'd read. It was written for you. It was set up for you to score the winning try. What happened, Jazz? Mate, it was. Uh, yeah. It was definitely uh, a stage set for. Uh, for something spectacular. Um, just didn't happen for us there on the night, you know. Um, I think it was uh, a scrappy game from, from both sides. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, Bradford held on to, to something that were they're very scrappy and uh, Wakefield, you know, we, we never really deserved to win. We never looked like winning. Right, um, obviously you've left the Bradford Bulls um, for Wakefield and there's been all sorts of things said on Twitter online about you going and about the club. Do you want to just set the record straight what actually happened? <laughs> um, well, I didn't, I didn't want to leave. Um, you know, obviously, the last two seasons I've been at Bradford, um, I found it a, a home away from home. Um, I've never played or been socialised with a, a better bunch of lads. Um, I think what the team and the club's gone through over the past few years has brought us a lot closer, um, both on and off the field. Um, but in pre-season, I was approached by Frenny and just said, you know, uh, permission to, to talk to other clubs and there'll be no uh, transfer fee involved. Um, I thought it was a bit strange, but anyway. Um, so I had a few clubs um, approach my agent. And, um, can you tell us who they were? You uh, can't, can't you? It <laughs> don't matter, you move now. Um, well, the, the big interests were um, Wakefield and London. Um, a few other interests from um, some other top four clubs, but... Obviously, I couldn't fit in the cap at, at this point in time, so either Wakefield or London or stay at Bradford. Um, I spoke with uh, with Franny and about my position and desire to, to stay at the club and um, if we could look at an extension of contract. But um, Franny said at this point in time he couldn't do it and um, that he'd had until the, the 31st of, of April. So um, I went away and, and had a thought about it and I just needed to make sure that uh, my family was secure and had the security 
um, and I had to make the, the tough decision to, to leave Bradford. The true fact of it is that you bust Crusaders, which screwed me over. <laughs> <laughs> You've now bust Bradford. <laughs> so you've got to go for the triple head and see if you can do a way through it again, aren't you? Mate, everything happens in threes. Everything happens in threes. <laughs> you said family. Um, you having a family, Jazz? I'm a family kind of guy. Come hey! On, you can announce it to the world if you want. Yeah, it's no secret. Um... If you expect it. Yes. She's trapped you. I expecting to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she's done a good job. <laughs> Congratulations to Jess and Jazz on the, the, Im the impending. Is it impending? Is that the word? Impending? Yes. Impending, yes. Um, both for your first child. Do you want a boy or a girl? Um, I think it would be easy for a boy, but. Um, Ask Jones. He's not too bothered. I've got four. I'm an expert. Big time. Uh, I've not had a girl, so I don't know what the difference is, but. I know uh, my boys always want to. Shows like it. Shows like it. Apart from the anatomical differences. Uh, Shows like it. Yeah, screw it. I think uh, having, having boys and that is obviously pretty good banging on that legacy, taking the name down, all that kind of. I just want to ask you, Blacktown, is that where you're from? Is, is, that, not, is that politically correct, that? Yeah, Blacktown. Where, where, about, where about in Australia is that? Where is it? Uh, it's in like Western Sydney area. Ah, oh, right, it's fair enough. Um, what's your talking... <laughs> Is that fair enough? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's alright, it's in yeah, Western yeah, Sydney area. <laughs> 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 What's he talking about? Well, uh, balls. <laughs> I think Keith Lynch and he come over, obviously Crusaders, Bradford, obviously Wakefield have had their own problems. What you must be quite disillusioned though when you go on, quite have quite a bad perspective of what Super League's been like in terms of you know, coming from the NRL, which is a relatively well run competition to, to what you've experienced over here and you mentioned their family, it's important. I know it's, I know um, you know I know big rude people like yourself and Cas Carvel or whatever thinking about the families in the future because at the end of the day it's an occupation you've got to make sure all things are right there as well because it affects you know, all, you know what's going to be your lasting perspective on, on Super League. Well it's a big thing for me obviously coming over from Australia um, <clears throat> the way things are run and the structure of the game everything um, pretty much falls in place like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, coming over here, um, things started well, but from there on, domino effect has just you know gone all downhill. Um, a lot of people mean well, and um, but I think there's a few things that either they're not qualified in or they don't really know exactly what they're doing, um, and that's where they come undone. A game with uh, with Crusaders um, and now Bradford, I just think that. There has to be something in place, whether it be through the RFL or, or something else, where either just completely stops it or gives um, the club or, or the players um, support where there's going to be no recurrences or, or issues where um, you know they could be they could find themselves out of a job basically. Um, in touch on family, well, we don't work nine to five, office job, anything like that. Yeah. This is our means of an income. So if we're getting paid late, paid short, or not getting paid at all, um, obviously it's a big stress on, on us and our families and when we come home and we bring a, the stress from uh, our environment at training and things and come home, just because they're there, they cop the brunt of it, um, really, and it's, it's not a healthy environment to, to live in, really. Absolutely. I mean, I've always been jealous of, uh, some, you've had some good facial hair of it over years. Uh, the Tash, uh, you, when I first seen you, you reminded me of like the local vampire. Uh, this unbelievable old school Tash from about 200 years ago. How, how come you've shaved it off and gone a little bit on that trail now? You're actually, it's a bit old, isn't it? You're actually getting a little bit boring nowadays, John. Yeah, you're just having a standard beard. It's, yeah, we, need, we need a little bit more from you. I love the Tash, I love the Tash, but I can't do it. So you can't grow your hair anymore. I can't grow my hair, so I'm, I'm just, listen, I'm trying, I'm asking the bloke a question. Get some advice and some inspiration here. Just, how, how can you speak about hair? <laughs> I can't You've do been anything. You've been since you were 19. You shave every little piece of your head off and put in your eyebrows. And run around looking like Lord Voldemort, isn't it? I'm oh. trying to find out what I can do with my first letters. Give me a few minutes, all right? You're on the spot here now. You better come up with something good. <laughs> uh, well, I've always thought you've had a, a really good bit of facial hair. Um, but me, I just, let start off with, with uh, Movember. Um, and from there on, um, I was like, we'll see how long I can last with it. And then... <clears throat> Obviously, it got to a point where everyone was like, you need to keep it. Um, but I like to be different. I like to do dif different things and, and change things up a lot. Um, when I came over to Crusaders, obviously, it was a big hit with the 
with the Welsh uh, fans down there, and um, you know, I'd see a lot of a lot of spectator supporters turn up to the games with like fake moustaches and um, really long long hair wigs and things. Um, uh, so I just sort of kept playing on it for the crowd. The crowd loved it, but uh, ended up getting rid of it because one of my fellow teammates, Richie Moore, um, his little boy is diagnosed with leukemia. Um, oh, yeah. So I just shave off for a little bit of funds, but obviously um, everybody knew about the, the tash and, and the hairdo. So um, you know, every, everybody got involved and, and supported uh, myself and Richie Moore. And, um, you know, in rugby league, it's a, it's a family-based sport, so everybody come out and, and show their support for Richie. Good on you, Paul. Um, I wanted to ask you because you, you've gone. I know the Bradford and Wigan lads pretty well. The Bradford and Wakefield lads. You've gone from one great set of lads to another great set of lads. How are you finding it with the boys at working? And have you, have you found your own Jamie Foster yet to pick on? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I have. I think I have. Um, Foxy. He's, he's a sitting duck. Yeah, he's, Foxy. Yeah, Foxy. <laughs> he's, he's a sitting duck. Um, no, uh, yeah, they're, they're both great sets of lads. Obviously, I've been been with Bradford for the last two and a bit seasons, and we've gone through through the crunch of everything and it's brought us a lot closer, not just on the field but, but off the field as well. Um, still, still settling in there at uh, Wakey, but um, for, for the past, I think maybe four days, I have been there. Um, you know, I can't complain. They're, they're a great bunch of lads. Uh, we've got a bit of bed happening already. Um, but no, Kermel's good value, isn't he? Um, yeah, he, he definitely sticks his hand up and, and adds some some banter there. Um, let's talk, before we move on to the fields, we'll go to a few minutes, we've got a few <coughs> problems with the match. If, if, can everybody hear us all right now? Can you just send us a tweet if you can hear me speaking? I'd appreciate that because we're just trying to work out what's wrong. Um, let's, let's just talk about your love-hate affair with Jim, Jamie Foster. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily love hate. It's just he's he's a sitting duck hate, himself. Hate. Um, yeah, you have a look at him. Uh, the first thing you do is you, you, you pick on his hairdo because it, it's never out of place. What is that? What is he doing now? Um, he's like got even, a comb over. It's he, terrible. Well, there was a game last year, a TV game uh, at Bradford uh, v Hull, and uh, well, half time, uh, cameras were on him, straight into the pocket of his bag, got out some wax, and um, restyled his hair during during half time. Wow. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> he, he's, he's very particular about his hair, so no, I, I get along really well with, with Jamie. He's, he's not a bad bloke, but um, you know, he's just he's he's easy pickings. <laughs> tell, tell us your top three Foster pranks. I can't, mate. You can. <laughs> They're too far. They're, They're too, too far. far. Yeah. Can you tell us about the one you told me about the other day? Which one was that? The last one just before you left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. That's. Go on. Sits in a category, you can't can't really air that out. Yeah. Oh, come on. We'll go. We'll, we'll ask you, Matt. We'll, we'll get. We'll, basic, can I tell him? I just no, no. It's too far. <laughs> yeah. Too far. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> if you see me out in a club or in the street, ask me. and I'll tell you. That's fine. Right. We're gonna go to a tune now. If you can hear us, all right. Send us a tweet. If you got any questions for Jared Summer tonight, tweet us at Rugby. Welcome to All Star FM. Mad Monday. <laughs> 